There are over 99 different ways a goblin speaks, but only one noise as generic as this one. Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at flipsidegaming.com and originalmagicart.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. Also, I want to bring to your attention the Kickstarter from Original Magic Art, where they're trying to get some sweet commander slash EDH generals onto playmats. He's directly working with the artists, so you'll be able to help support them, and if you use the affiliate link below, you'll also be able to help support me and get your hands on some of these sweet playmats. If you're watching this, that means that I'm back in New Jersey, and we've got a new commander and some old friends. Sean is taking his Izoni deck out, keeping Glowspor Shaman, Lanoir Wastes, Grizzly Salvage, Kessig Cagebreakers, Hissing Quagmire, Satyr Wayfinder, and a Forest. Trevor is playing his Crewfix deck, keeping an island, I have Ugin, Search for Kanta, Forest, Eldrazi Temple, and Hinterland Harbor. Mike is playing his Cassetto deck again, keeping an island, a Command Tower, a Rampaging Baylos, Vizier of Many Faces, Sky Shroud Claim, Lifecrafter's Bestiary, and a Soul Ring. And last but not least, Matt, who's playing his 8.5 Tails, is keeping three Snow-Covered Plains, Solemn Simulacrum, Aura of Silence, Comeuppance, and Mother of Ruins. Mike wins the die roll and starts us off. Mike plays an island and he casts a soul ring. Matt plays a snow-covered plains and casts Mother of Ruins. Trevor plays an island and passes turn. Sean plays a tapped hissing quagmire and he passes. Mike plays an evolving wilds and pays three to cast Lifecrafter's Bestiary. Matt plays a snow-covered plains and he casts eight and a half tails, passing to Trevor. Trevor plays a hinterland harbor and he casts Search for his Kanta. Sean plays a forest and we see a satyr wayfinder hit the field. He mills himself for 4, and he keeps a forest. Mike plays a command tower as a land for turn, and he casts a sky shroud claims. He grabs two forests, and he passes while searching. Matt plays a snow-covered plains, and brings out his aura of silence, passing to Trevor. Trevor uses his search trigger on his upkeep, and he mills the top card. He then plays a forest, and he passes. Sean plays a swamp, and he casts glow spore shaman, milling three more cards, and he moves to combat. He swings a satyr at Trevor, who claims he's not up to anything, but still takes the one. Mike plays a Rampaging Bayloth in his main phase, and he drops an island. This gives him a landfall trigger from the Bayloth, and he passes while finding his token. Matt plays a Snow-Covered Plains, and casts Solemn Simulacrum. He goes and grabs a Tap Snow-Covered Plains, and he passes turn. Trevor uses his Search Trigger on his upkeep, but keeps it on top and draws it for turn. He plays an island, and then casts Cultivate, and then passes as he's finding his lands. Sean plays a Lanoir Wastes, and casts Lanoir Elves. He then casts a Buried Alive, and swings a Satyr at Trevor before passing turn. Mike casts Cassetto in his main phase, and pays the 1 from the Bestiary trigger to draw a card. He then gives his Rampaging Bayloth unblockable with Cassetto, and he swings it at Sean for 6. Matt plays a Snow-Covered Plains, and he casts a Mentor of the Meek. With nothing else, he passes to Trevor. Trevor plays an Eldrazi Temple as his land for turn, and he casts Crufix. Don't worry though, we do catch that Crufix should cost more, and we correct it shortly. Sean plays a forest and he evokes a Shriek Maw. He targets and destroys the Rampaging Bayloth, redeeming himself in the eyes of Trevor. Sean then casts a Grizzly Salvage, milling himself for 5, and he keeps a land from the 5. Mike scries, and he bottoms the card with his bestiary, and plays his own Hinderland Harbor. He casts a Conduit of Ruin, and goes and finds a colorless creature, putting it on top. Trevor realizes his own mistake at this point, and puts Crufix back to the command zone, untapping his lands. Mike decides on Void Winnower, putting it on top of his library, and passing turn. Matt plays Snow-Covered Plains as land for turn, and with nothing else, passes. Trevor plays an island and corrects his mistake, casting a Mana Crypt and paying 2 for it, and then casting Crufix, paying an extra 2 for that as well. Sean dredges back his Stingweed Imp instead of drawing, milling himself for 5 cards. He plays a Woodland Cemetery, and then drops a Kessig Cagebreakers. Sean then passes to Mike. Mike scries and keeps it on top, drawing it for turn. We then see the Void Winner hit the field, and he pays 1 to draw from the Bestiary. Mike then passes, and at the end of turn, Matt casts Enlightened Tutor, and he goes to find Grasp of Fate. Matt draws his Grasp for turn, and casts it in his main phase. He hits the Void Winner, the Cage Breakers, and Trevor's Mana Crypt. He then passes to Trevor. Trevor mills the top card with his Search Trigger, and he plays an Expedition Eye of Ugin. With nothing else, he passes to Sean. Sean plays a Zulaport Cutthroat in his main phase, and he casts a Stinkweed Imp. Moving to combat, Sean hits Trevor for 1 with the Wayfinder, and passes. Mike scries one and bottoms the card. He then casts a Hunting Wilds to find two forests, and then passes turn. Matt draws and he plays a Land Tax in his main phase. 
He then passes to Trevor, who at the end of turn, activates his Eye of Ugin, and he goes to find Kozlik, the Great Distortion. Trevor uses his search trigger on his upkeep, keeping the card on top and drawing it. He then plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Eldrazi, and he drops the Kozlik he just found. He draws four cards as he only has three in hand, and he passes to Sean. Sean plays a Swamp, and he casts a Lotleth Giant, counting up how many creatures he has in his graveyard. He totals at 11, and Mike takes 11 damage, and Sean passes turn. Mike scries one and bottoms the card, and moves to cast a Biden of Thassa. Trevor counters it with Kozilek's ability, discarding a Defense of the Heart, which Sean approves of. Mike then activates Cassetto's ability, targeting Cassetto himself, and he swings his commander at Matt for four unblockable commander damage. Matt counts up Mike's lands and uses his land tax trigger to go and find three snow-covered planes. He plays one of them as his land for turn, and he enchants Cassetto with Darksteel Mutation. He then passes, and at the end of turn, Trevor floats slash saves a mana to Crufix. Trevor mills a Ghost Quarter with his search trigger in his upkeep. He asks who wants a Wrath, and then moves to resolve an All is Dust. Matt responds to the spell by sacrificing his Aura of Silence to blow up Mike's Soul Ring. He then makes the Kozilek, the Bestiary, the Conduit, and Trevor's Utility Lands into White Permanence. Not really wanting to lose all of these things, Trevor counters his own spell by discarding Boundless Realms to Kozilek's ability. Trevor then drops a Yavimaya Hollow, and he all but taps out to cast his Consecrated Sphinx. Sean draws, and Trevor draws too. Sean then casts his commander, Zoni the Thousand Eyes, and he makes 11 black and green insect tokens. He then loses one to sacrifice the Seder Wayfinder to his Zoni's ability, and he gains a life from the ability, and then gains another life as he drains the table with the Cutthroat. Mike scries one, and he bottoms the card. He plays a Yavimaya Coast as his land for turn, and Trevor draws two from his Sphinx trigger. Mike then casts his Vizier of Many Faces, and pays one to draw from the Bestiary trigger, letting Trevor draw two more. Mike then has the Vizier come in as a copy of the Consecrated Sphinx, and he passes turn. Matt uses his land tax trigger on his upkeep, putting three more basics into his hand. He then draws for turn, and Mike and Trevor draw a lot of cards. Matt then plays a snow-covered plains, and he drops Avacyn Angel of Hope, who is countered by Kozilek as Trevor discards an Ugin, and Matt passes turn. Trevor looks at the top card of his library with the search trigger, but leaves it there, and he flips his enchantment to reveal as Kanta the Sunken Ruin. Trevor then draws for turn, and Mike draws two, which lets Trevor draw four more. Trevor then casts Soul Ring, and he drops a strip mine as his land for turn. Trevor then casts his own copy of Voidwinor, and drops a Seedborn Muse, who Mike tries to counter with a Dissolve. Sadly, Trevor is able to discard Spellseeker to counter Mike's counter, and the Seedborn then resolves. Sean draws for turn, and Trevor responds to his own Sphinx trigger with a Mystical Tutor to go and find Cyclonic Rift. Mike draws a conservative two cards, while Trevor draws four from Mike's draws. Sean then casts a Stitcher's Supplier, and mills three more cards. Moving to combat, he swings Stinkweed Imp at Trevor for one. At the end of turn, Trevor floats all of his mana and saves it with Crufix. Mike draws and Trevor draws too. We then see an Edric hit the field, and I can't be the only one concerned at how many cards Trevor might draw as a result of this. Mike then casts a Quiet as Spike, which Trevor counters by discarding Blue Sun Zenith. Mike then moves to resolve a Trigon Predator, and he plays an Island for his turn, passing. At the end of Mike's second main phase, Trevor flashes in Jin Kataxis. With the spell in the stack, Sean sacrifices the Stinkweed Imp to his Oni, which has Sean draw a card, and gain a life, and then gain another life from the Cutthroat trigger as he drains his opponents for one. Trevor then saves more mana with Crufix, and Mike discards his hand as Matt starts his turn. Matt finds some more snow-covered planes at the start of his turn, and draws, letting Mike and Trevor draw two. Matt then places snow-covered planes, and he makes a deal with Mike, who promises to block the Solemn if Matt swings at it. Matt does so, and with the Solemn dying, Matt draws a card, and Mike and Trevor draw two. Matt then casts an Avon Mind Sensor, paying the one to the Mentor trigger and drawing a card. And surprisingly, Mike is the only one who decides to draw. At the end of Matt's turn, Trevor casts an Overload of Cyclonic Rift. John responds, sacrificing the Stitcher's Supplier, but misses the Mill trigger to his Oni. He gains one life, draws a card, and drains the table for one. He then does it again, sacrificing an Insect this time, and the Rift resolves. With the Grasp of Fate getting bounced back to Matt's hand, the three permanents come back to the field, and Trevor then casts a Mystic Confluence, choosing to bounce the Void Winner and Kessig Cagebreaker and draw a card. Matt then responds to his Jin Taxis trigger, and he flashes in an Avon Mind Sensor and passes to Trevor. Trevor rolls for his Mana Crypt trigger and loses three life. He then drops an Aestheticism, and he plays a Shrine of the Forsaken Gods. Moving to combat, he takes out Mike. Trevor then casts an Emrakul the Promised End, taking Sean's next turn. He then casts Lightning Greaves and puts them onto Kozilek. Trevor then drops a Mirage Mirror, and he moves to Sean's turn. Trevor is Sean Dredge for the Stinkweed Imp, and he then casts a Lotleth Giant in his main phase, and deals 16 to Matt. Trevor then plays Sean's Pajuka Bog, and exiles Sean's Graveyard. 
He then discards Sean's hand at the end of turn, and he passes to Sean. Sean draws and casts an Ashnaut's altar in his extra turn. He animates the hissing quagmire and swings it at Trevor. Trevor blocks with Jingataxis, regenerating him, but Sean sacrifices to Ashnaut's altar before any damage is done. Sean then passes, and the guys then concede to Trevor when Matt draws no answer for the board. Game review time. So there were a few things I thought that could have been done differently. Mind you, this is all from my perspective, so take it with a grain of salt. I probably wouldn't have put Dark Sea Mutation onto Cassetto, even though it gave things unblockable, since it could have made my stuff unblockable to help take out Trevor. I probably would have saved it in Matt's case for the Kozilek, and even if it meant getting countered, at least I would have tried to take out the Kozilek. I also think that Sean could have been more aggressive with his insect army, as it mostly just sat back and didn't do anything until Cyclonic Rift. He missed out on a lot of damage, and could have potentially taken Trevor to a much more manageable level. It was cool to see some new cards, and Lotleth Giant is a particular one I've got my eye on, and it did 27 damage this game, that's not bad. Mike unfortunately suffered from having no ways to protect his creatures really, and as a result, all of his giant creatures that could have been unblockable were unfortunately dealt with before he was able to use them. This is a bit of a shame since I liked the direction of his deck, which is mostly focused around making things unblockable, and then drawing or doing stuff on connecting. Trevor also made a bit of a mistake using the All His Dust that could have paid off much better for the table, and much worse for him. Had he not had the Boundless Realms to counter his own spell in hand, Matt was about to make things very problematic for Trevor. An 8.5 Tails ability should not be overlooked, it's tricky and can often catch people off guard. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.